And then, um, <coughs> and then that's when they're <laughs> comfortable <laughs> with us. All right. How often do you come up here for for clinics? Uh, therapy. <laughs> Once a week. You've been coming for about a year. Yeah. And you said when he first came here, <coughs> describe the differences between the first time you saw him and what you're seeing today. When we first came in, we did a diagnostic, and it was interesting to see Chris when he walked into the clinic from his, you know, his body language, his, um, you know, just a, just scared to walk in, and we took tons of video of him and a pre pre therapy. His <coughs> speech was. He actually took three and four minutes to get a word out. We have him read a passage. He couldn't say a single word. There was no eye con The eye contact was probably zero. He would look down, look away. <coughs> and Chris, you can obviously correct me. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and <coughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, his eye contact was really low. His body language couldn't. He wouldn't, you know, go up and talk to people. And we saw him systematically for that year, and we, we, we did a hierarchy, and we looked at the least fearful situations to the most fearful. And today, Chris has moved to the next level. And I asked him, he said, I can't go to college. And now he's coming back, he's applying to LCC. He's, um, we actually empowered Chris, said, you need to go and do this. You need to go get the job yourself. And today, he's speaking in front of people, and he still stutters. But... It, we are working in a way where he stutters differently. And we have some techniques. We There's a long process that we evolve before we come to some therapy techniques. And now he's in the stage where we look at these things called cancellations, pullouts, and prep sets. A cancellation, for example, is when Chris speaks and says, my name is... takes the emotion away. Chris, he pauses for a second and changes it and goes, Chris, can you do that for me? Or fake the block on Chris yeah. and then may become real and keep the eye contact with me with no emotion. Go ahead, my name. My no. name is... Keep the eye contact. Hold it. Chris. Pause. Chris. Chris. So that's called a cancellation. You cancel it, repair it as soon as it goes on. And before that, we do something called identification. Because you cannot treat stuttering if you don't identify what's wrong. So we identify <coughs> the attitudes, the feelings, the speech, we categorize it. After cancellations, we go to something called pullouts, <coughs> where maybe go ahead, Chris, uh, Sue can demonstrate a pullout, <coughs> and then you can. Okay. So essentially, what's happening in a pullout is you feel yourself going into a stutter, and then you want to go to that part of the cancellation. You're not going to do a full cancellation if you kind of skip the step of having to repeat it, but if you feel yourself go into the stutter, you pull yourself out of the stutter. And a lot of what it is uh, is thinking about going, thinking about the shape of the word, and I think a lot of it is the vowel, going to the vowel and, yeah. and stretching that out a little bit. So if he were going, if he felt himself getting stuck on Chris, on the k of Chris, if he said, my name is Chris, because he can feel that the stutter is coming, yeah, so, so he's going to pull himself out of that a little and the way we do that is because he's identified so well before. Now we spend a lot of time identification, cataloging, stuttering, identifying, and noting what situations. Now this is into a fear situation here, <coughs> but once the fear disappears, and we want to make sure we desensitize you to stuttering. And so a prep pullout will be, my name is Chris. Oh, Chris. You don't some other word now. Say I'm happy to m meet you. Go ahead. <coughs> Well, this would be a pull out. There you go. Mm -hmm. And now a prep set is I already know it's coming. I know I'm a, I, the Chris stutters on nearly every second or third word. And so he, he's still stuttering, but he's going to stutter differently. So a prep set is I'm preparing for it, and I'm going to be using. And you can even reduce the stretch in time. So I'm prepping for it. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> this would be a prep set. And Great. I, uh, it's pretty much There's just a 24 hour constant monitoring of my speech until eventually it becomes innate and natural so I won't have to focus too much on my 
techniques, <coughs> but for an example, that was a cancellation, and uh, this is a pullout. And, and so he, he, once he, he's, you get our aim again, is if the prep set doesn't work, right, and like, oh my gosh, it's not working, you drop back to the pullout. If the pullout's not working, you drop back to the cancellation. And at the same time, the eye contact, you know, obviously body language, yeah. intonation, stress. Yeah. So there's a lot that goes in and it builds it up. One task builds on the next. Yeah, it's, yeah it, it sometimes drives me crazy because I have to constantly stay focused on what I'm saying and how I'm saying it, but, but eventually, like I said, it will all come natural. And there's another technique, it's called um, fluency shaping. This is called stuttering modification, we modify the stuttering. The other technique is called fluency shaping, where we use things called airflow management, easy onsets, you know, stretching the word, using, like right now, if I'm using airflow management, it's so subtle that you cannot even hear the airflow coming out. And there's an eclectic approach that you you use both. In the, in the movie, they, they use things like cognitive restructuring, they use intonation, and you use these structures. But Chris is coming to a stage now where he becomes his own therapist in the end. And that's the aim for us to kind of, you know, let, because they, in the end, control their own, their, we want to make st stuttering for him that little, and everything else is like, I stutter. And so when we tell them, so how are you doing, Chris? You sound amazing. <coughs> you know, I don't hear you stutter much anymore. And what would you say? <laughs> nice faking it. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, we'll, we'll, we'll work on the model. It's an interest of Chris, so we, we try to incorporate that into what we're doing. So I can show you, we've, we're looking a little uh, at A Midsummer's Night's Dream, right? Yeah. Remember for this? Okay, so let's try it, and we're, what we're going to do is make sure that we're going to the vowel, we're stretching it out, making sure that you're reducing the glottal attacks, right? And let's just do a few of these lines. If we shallows have offended, think that this and all is mended, that you have but... Slumber in here. Good, and do the cancellation. Slumber in here. Mm -hmm. now usually you do the cancellation. You shouldn't even hit the word there. It should be s s s slumber. Now, I'll show you a technique. It's called choral reading. Now they'll read together and you'll see the stuttering disappears. Go ahead. Both yeah. of you read together. Yeah. If we shadows have offended, think but this and all is mended, that you have but slumbered here while these visions did appear. So what is it? Um, it's like singing... It, you know, when you do a choral reading, it's like you're doing um, voices together. There's no as much, not as much communicative pressure. You're also looking at the rhythm and stress of the other speaker. And so, there's something in schools, for example, if kids are terrified of reading, if she stopped and he started, continued, the stuttering would continue at that level. So it's another way of showing that you know you could eliminate stuttering, but it's not realistic. You don't do this in real life every mm -hmm. time. But in the word slumber, he knew it was coming up. He could have used this technique, but if he, if it didn't work, the prep set, he could have stopped on slumber, paused, and got out of it, and continued. And we tell them if it, if he could continues getting in that cycle, to go through, but throw the word back in conversation again, so it doesn't become a feared word. So there's a lot that goes into it as well. And this is adult treatment with children, young children. We have a totally different techniques. We don't use any of these. It's uh, many many different types of indirect direct therapies, but we don't do such drastic measures. And you've said that children as early as age two? Usually two and a half to three, stuttering begins, develops. and usually between three and five is where most stuttering occurs. And yes, we have back-to-back, -back. our clinic is packed with tons of kids, and we actually offer Friday evening clinics so that people in the community can come in, children. Um, it's pretty busy.